So you're drawing Lewis structures and you want to evaluate and see if the structure you've got is the right structure. In order to do that, you can do use something called a formal charge. Here are your learning objectives. If you need to pause the video and write them down, uh, go ahead and do that and then start it up again. So, formal charge is a way of comparing various Lewis structures that you might be able to draw for a molecule and it helps you choose the best or most likely structure. Formal charges are not real charges, they're implied and they're less extreme than oxidation states. Oxidation states are very much fixed on the atom. Formal charges are just used to help you figure out whether or not your structure makes sense. Here's how you calculate formal charge. It's a very simple formula, a little bit of subtraction and addition. Formal charge is the number of valence electrons in the unbonded atom. So take the atom before you put it in the molecule. How many valence electrons does it have? Write that down. From that you're going to subtract the sum. The sum of the number of non-bonding electrons, that means the number of electrons in lone pairs, the dots, plus half of the number of electrons that are shared. In other words, half of the number of electrons in bonds. And that's it. That's all you need for a formal charge. Now there are some rules, some things that you have to consider when you're figuring out the formal charge of your atoms. For one thing, the total of all the formal charges on all the atoms in a molecule has to equal the charge on the particle. If it's a neutral molecule, then all the formal charges have to add to zero. If it's a polyatomic ion, which has a charge, then the sum of the formal charges has to add to that charge. Second, in an ideal or the best possible structure, all of the atoms in your structure will have a formal charge of zero. Now, it's not always possible to do this, so sometimes you're going to have to make a judgment based on the best possible formal charges. What does that mean? Well, for one thing, the most electronegative atom in your structure should have a negative formal charge. If it can't be zero, then the most electronegative atom should be negative. The central atom, if possible, should have a zero formal charge. Ideally, everybody wants zero or negative if it can't be zero. Again, these are just what you're looking to try to maximize the number of, of uh, rules that you can maximize. The formal charges should be small numbers, ones, minus one plus one or zero obviously. And then any two atoms that are connected to each other, adjacent, uh, they shouldn't have formal charges that are charged the same. So you shouldn't have two positives connected to each other or two negatives if you can avoid that. If you want to take a little shortcut, one of the things you should be able to recognize is what we call the normal bonding patterns for some atoms. Normal bonding patterns, it means the number of bonds that a particular atom wants to form. And that's usually determined by the number of unpaired electrons in the atom when it's by itself. Carbon likes to form four bonds. We're not going to see very many situations where carbon does not have four bonds. And that's because carbon has four unpaired electrons. Halogens. The halogens all have seven electrons. One of them is unpaired, so the halogens like to form one bond. Nitrogen has three unpaired electrons. Nitrogen wants to form three bonds. Oxygen. Oxygen has two unpaired electrons. Oxygen prefers to form two bonds. If you can spot atoms that are bonding in their normal bonding pattern, you can save yourself a little, a little time in calculating your formal charges because those atoms will have a formal charge of zero, which is the ideal, right? All right, so let's take an example. So for our example, we're going to do N2O, dinitrogen monoxide. Quick count of electrons, valence electrons. We have two nitrogens. Nitrogen is five apiece, so that's 10. We have an oxygen, and that's six, so a total of 16 electrons to put in our structure. The trick is the skeleton. I'm not really sure in looking at this. Normally the central atom is written first, but there's two nitrogens. So do I put the oxygen in the middle like this, or do I put the two nitrogens connected to each other like that? Well, I don't really know right now, so I'm going to try to see if I can satisfy the Lewis rules, get everybody eight valence electrons, just by doing one or the other. Uh, I've just used four electrons 
to make my structures, which means that I have 12 electrons left to place. That's six pairs. According to the Lewis rules, I should start by putting them around the most electronegative atom. That means this oxygen. And that gives us oxygen 8. And I've used 4 of my 12. I have 8 left. So I'm just going to go ahead and put uh, 2, 4, 6, and I'll put 8 there. Okay. Uh, this nitrogen is fine. It has 8. This oxygen is fine. It has 8. This nitrogen, not fine, only has 4. It needs to get four more, but I'm out of dots. I have no more dots to place. I could move around some of these lone pairs and create some double bonds, maybe. So let me do that. Uh, I can take, for example, the lone pairs off the oxygen, perhaps. And I'll take them both off this central oxygen, and I'll create, um, let's say, a double bond there. And I could create a triple bond. We could try that. Let's see if we still have 16 electrons. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. This nitrogen has 8. This oxygen has 8. And this nitrogen here has 8. That works. That's a possible arrangement of atoms. So let's say that maybe that's, or of electrons, that's maybe how we'll do it. I can do the same thing over here. I still have uh, 12 electrons on this structure here. So I'm going to start by filling up oxygen. There's two. 4, 6, 8, 10, and 12, 14, 16. Total of 16 over here. Oxygen's all set. Nitrogen's all set. This nitrogen is not. We're in the same situation where we have 4. So I'm going to make some multiple bonds here. I'm going to take those electrons off of the nitrogen and make a double bond. This nitrogen now still has 2, 4, 6, 8. This nitrogen has 2, 4, 6. So not enough. Maybe I'll make a triple bond. Like that. This nitrogen here has 2, 4, 6, 8. This nitrogen has 2, 4, 6, 8. And the oxygen has 8. So everybody has 8 here. So both of these structures look like they could be the right structure. They all follow the Lewis rules. I've used all the atoms. I've used all 16 electrons. And everybody's got 8. So how do I know which one is correct? The answer is formal charge. We're going to calculate the formal charges of every atom in my structure. Now, for the sake of doing this correctly, I'm going to call this nitrogen here nitrogen 1 and this nitrogen nitrogen 2. Similarly, I'll call the first nitrogen on the left nitrogen 1 and the one on the right nitrogen 2, just so that I can distinguish between them. There's only one oxygen, so I don't need to do that for oxygen. All right, so let's calculate the formal charge of nitrogen 1 in this atom right here, in this molecule. So nitrogen 1. The formal charge is calculated. If you remember, you have the formula written down. The number of electrons in the unbonded atom, nitrogen, when it's not bonded, has five valence electrons, just like that. So number of electrons in unbonded nitrogen is five. From that, we're going to subtract the sum of the number of electrons in lone pairs, non-bonding electrons. There are two plus half the number of electrons that are being shared. Well, this nitrogen is sharing six electrons, three pairs, three bonds. So half of six. Five minus two plus half of six. Half of six is three. Two plus three is five. Five minus five is zero. Hey, that's pretty good. Could have taken the shortcut, though. This nitrogen is forming three bonds. Nitrogen likes to form three bonds because it has three unpaired electrons. If you have nitrogen with three bonds, its normal bonding pattern, its formal charge will always be zero. Let's do the oxygen in the middle. Calculate the formal charge of the oxygen. So the number of electrons in the unbonded atom. Oxygen has six valence electrons in the unbonded atom. From that, we're going to subtract the number of electrons in lone pairs, non-bonding. There are none plus half of the number of electrons in shared pairs or in bonds. There are eight electrons that oxygen is sharing. It is sharing six with that nitrogen and two with that one. So half of eight. Half of eight is four. Four plus zero is four. Six minus four is plus two. Okay. We'll do the final nitrogen there. Nitrogen two. Formal charge. Again, nitrogen always has five electrons in the unbonded atom. 
From that, we're going to subtract, look, this has two, four, six electrons in its non-bonding. And it has two electrons that are being shared, so half of two that are being shared. So half of two is one, six and one is seven, five minus seven is minus two. So those are my formal charges for the, um, the elements in this molecule. I'm going to do the same thing over on this side. Nitrogen number one, that's this one right here on the left. Formal charge of that nitrogen, number of electrons in the unbonded atom is always five for nitrogen. From that, we're going to subtract. There are two electrons in lone pairs, two non-bonding electrons. And that nitrogen is sharing six electrons, so half of six. Half of six is three, three and two is five. Five minus five is zero. We already knew, though, that this nitrogen has three bonds, so it should have zero. The nitrogen in the middle, that's nitrogen number two, formal charge of that one. Five is the number of valence electrons in the unbonded nitrogen. From that, there are no lone pairs, so no electrons in non-bonding pairs. And it's sharing, this nitrogen is sharing six electrons over here and two over here, a total of eight. So half of eight is four, five minus four is plus one. And finally, the oxygen down the end over here. Oxygen's formal charge is calculated the same way. Oxygen normally has six when it's unbonded. From that, we're going to subtract two, four, six from the lone pairs, and then half of two, because it's sharing two electrons here. Half of two is one. One plus six is seven. Six minus seven is minus one. All right, there are my formal charges. Now I'm going to evaluate and see which structure looks best. Well, over here on the left, I have a formal charge of zero. That's a good thing. This nitrogen has got a formal charge of zero. I'd like for all of them to be zero, but I don't have that. The oxygen has a formal charge of plus two. That's bad. Oxygen is the most electronegative atom in this molecule. It should definitely have a negative formal charge. So that's bad for this structure. That doesn't look good. And finally, look at how big my numbers are here. Plus 2, minus 2, that's pretty big for formal charges. That's not a good situation. I'm not liking the left structure because my formal charges are, are not really helping me out here. Let's look at the right-hand structure. We also have a nitrogen that has a formal charge of 0. That's good. The central atom, well, it's, it's positive. It shouldn't be positive. It should be zero or negative, but sometimes we can't avoid it. Over here, the central oxygen had a plus two, so a plus one is at least better than that. But here's the kicker. The oxygen, which is the most electronegative atom in the structure, has a formal charge of minus one. That's awesome. Any adjacent atoms should be at least opposite charges or should not have the same charge. The two nitrogens are zero and plus one respectively. That's good. Uh, that wasn't really an issue over here. But overall, I would say that the structure on the right has the best formal charges, nice small numbers, oxygen, most electronegative, negative formal charge, way better than what we have over here. So using my judgment, I would have to say this structure on the right is the structure for N2O because the formal charges support that. And in fact, that's what we see. This is the accepted structure for N2O. So it's not difficult to do. It does require a little bit of calculation, but it's simple math. And then examining and seeing how the rules stack up. Your best structure will be the one that has the most reasonable formal charges. And that's all there is to it. So give it a try on some of the structures that you've done. Always check your formal charges. And uh, if you can get them all to be zero, that's the best case scenario. Give it a try.